originally came to the, to, to the uh, Intellectual Property Caucus because I was working at University of uh, at Cal, Cal State San Bernardino where I had a uh, message come across my listserv from a list group that our listserv I was working with. It, it included an article from a Times newspaper, I believe, that my students were looking at. I had a problem with my system and the administrators had to go on to my account to determine what the problem was. They found this message and I got this anonymous message from an up, upper administration that I had violated copyright, that I had no right to distribute this article on my class listserv. And I got pretty upset about it. So I started doing some research. I discovered there was this caucus and I, I came with this issue to the caucus and had such a good experience learning from the members who were present who could give me advice and got so in interested in the, in the material that caucus uh, addresses that I've been a member ever since. I'm now the chair of the uh, intellectual property committee for three C's. I believe I have one more year uh, before my um, stint is, is finished. I've gained a great deal from being a participant here, not only because I've learned about intellectual property concerns from others, but also because I've been able to follow my interest in intellectual property. Um, when I found out that, in fact, what I was doing could be considered fair use uh, from that initial caucus, I came back to my campus and I let my administrators know that, in fact, this fell within certain rights and that I, was, I had a right to do this. Uh, and it had an impact. It, it, it changed the way in which they perceived how articles could be used in the classroom for uh, short articles for classroom purposes. Uh, I then became the chair of the Intellectual Property Committee on my campus when I came to my new campus at Florida Atlantic University where I've been now for 12 years. I asked to be on the Intellectual Property Committee which I've been on now for 11 years. So I guess my point is getting involved at some point in your career can enable you to not only learn more about the field, but also become an activist, become an advocate, um, enable issues in intellectual property become important for you and for your Two of the issues that have emerged for me recently out of this work have grown from a book-length project I'm currently working on. One of them involves a case that's currently in the courts. Uh, Cambridge, Oxford, and Sage Presses had sued um, Georgia State University for their online reserve practices as well as their use of what they call their e-reserve, their, uh, their uh, e-res, which is their uh, courseware uh, software for managing classes. They were accusing faculty of copying too much material, violating copyright, not paying licenses. Uh, it, it's a case that had been in the works or, or been likely to, come, to emerge for several years because uh, publishers had been um, going to universities and confronting them, telling them they were doing too much with copyright materials without permission, and restrictive licenses were being produced, uh, practices were being developed, uh, not best practices, but preferred practices for publishers. So when this case came along, Georgia State decided they wanted to take on the big publishers and uh, take their chances in the courts. Over the course of the last couple of years, it started in 2008 and is, has been heard before a judge, is now waiting, awaiting a decision. Uh, this case could determine whether electronic reserves in the library will continue to be available or possible, legally viable, or whether they'll be dramatically reduced or legally eliminated uh, in the next year, in the next few months perhaps. Uh, the case looks like it's moving in the direction of the university. Uh, I won't go through many of the details, but uh, it's, it's worth noting that uh, state institutions cannot be sued for uh, compensation or past offenses because they have state immunity, um, and therefore they can only be sued 
for, for stopping doing something that they're doing that's deemed illegal. Uh, and because of that exception, there's an exemption in copyright law, uh, the, they, are, they were able to create a thoughtful, reflective policy at Georgia State implemented after the case was initiated. Uh, and the, the judge recognized that policy as a, as a thoughtful policy, better than even many policies that are available elsewhere in the country, and determined that no uh, uh, materials or copyright concerns from before that policy could be considered in the case because uh, you can't cease and desist something that's already stopped when a new policy has started. So it was actually a very good decision on Georgia State's part to, to make that maneuver.